Okay, um, hello everyone. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Okay, all right. So sorry about the the couple of days uh, delay. I, I had an issue with my computer, but then I it's fixed now. So so that's good. All right. Okay. So the next programming chapter five is prime numbers. A prime number is a number that is only evenly divisible by itself and one. For example, the number five is prime because it can only be evenly divis divided by one and five. The number six, however, is not prime because it can be divided evenly by 1, 2, 3, and 6. Write a Boolean function named is prime, which takes an integer as an argument and returns true if the argument is a prime number, or false otherwise. Use the function in a program that prompts the user to enter a number and then displays a message indicating whether the number is prime. Okay. All right, so in this program, you're going to go ahead and create a function called is prime, and that function is going to accept a number. And then it's going to figure out w whether that number is a prime number or not and return true if that number is and return false if that number is not a prime number okay so let's go ahead and start all right so we, we know we're going to define a function called is prime over here it says write a boolean function named is prime so let's do that so i'm going to go ahead and define the function and i'm going to call it as prime now over here it's defined this way i'm going to try and i'm going to actually name mine using camel case okay so I'm going to use write it this way and you know it's just because I'm used to camel case and that's why but you can name it this way if you want okay doesn't doesn't make any difference all right so I mean it, it doesn't make you know I know that I know that there is the pep3 standard where it, it recommends that we actually name variables this way but you know I I'm used to camel case too so it shouldn't make any significant difference <laughs> and I guess that's, that's what I'm trying to say Okay, so I've, I've defined a function called as prime over here. Now let's see if the well, of course, we know this function is going to accept an argument, right? It's going to accept a number. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and define a parameter for this number. So I'm going to just call it number, right? We, we know this function is going to accept a number. So now let's define what's going to happen happen in this um, um, what's going what's going to happen? Yeah, what's going to happen in this function, right? So we take the number. Well, first of all, let, let's let's think about it for a second. Let, let, let's just start with uh, negative numbers, 0 and 1. We know 1, 0. Basically, anything less than 1 is not prime, right? Actually, anything less than or equal to 1 is not prime because 1 itself is not a prime number. 0 is not a prime number. And all negative numbers are not prime numbers. So let's just start um, with that, right? We know this function is going to return true if the number is prime and false if the number is not prime. So... Let's first check on the number and say if the number given right is less than or equal to one, then we know that number is not prime already. So in that case, let's go ahead and return false. Let's go ahead and return return false. All right. So now we've, we've taken care of that. If the user enters zero, one, or negative numbers, it, it's going to return false. That means that number is not prime. Okay. Now what if that number is actually is is greater than one, which means two and above, right? So now. That's where we have to also write, write code to figure figure those out. Or, or figure yeah yeah figure the yeah, numbers in that range. Um, or basically numbers greater than um, one. Um, we have to figure out to see if it uh, it's a prime or not, right? But if you take a prime number, we know that it says over here that a prime number is a number that is only evenly divisible by itself and one, right? Meaning that um, when you take a prime number, there are going to be only two. If, if meaning if you start from let's say the number one right all the way to the number if you if you take that number you start from one and you divide that, that number by one by two by three all the way to that number itself you should have only two even divisions so what i mean by that is um let, let me just go ahead and open a calculator here assuming we have five right we, we know we know that for a prime number it's only divis uh, it's only evenly divisible by itself and one Right, so if we take a prime number and we divide it by numbers starting from one all the way to the number itself, we should have only two even divisions. And if we have only two even divisions, then we know that the number is prime, right? So if I take five for example, and I divide five by one, divide five by two, divide five by three, all the way to five by five, we are dividing from one all the way to the number itself. We should get only two even divisions. That's what proves that a number is prime or not. Right. So let's take five for example and divide by. If you if you divide by one, you get five. Re remainder zero. 
Okay, if you divide a number and you get a remainder of zero, then that's evenly divisible. So if you take five and we divide by divide by one, we get five, but we get a remainder of zero. So that's one even division right there. It was evenly divisible. So we count it. We, we are counting to see that if we divide this number by one, by two, by three, all the way to five, we are checking to see if we are going to get exactly two even divisions. We divided five by one and we got five. Right? We remainder zero. So that's one even division there. So that, let's count. So that's one. Five, five divided by two, it gives us 2.5. It's, it's not, it, it gives us a remainder, not a, a remainder of, of 0.5. Because it doesn't give us a remainder of zero, this is not an even division. There's a, there's a remainder at the end or, of 0.5. So that's not an even division, right? So we still have one even division. So five divided by three. Okay, this one also has a remainder of 0.666, you know, all the way to, you know, 6667, right? So that's not an even division. So let's keep on dividing. Five divided by four. That's 1.25. It gives us a remainder of 0.25. So that's not an even division. 5 divided by 5, we get 1 remainder 0, right? So because we got the remainder of 0, that's an even division, okay? So we, now we have two even divisions. So if we keep, if we do that, if we take a number and divide that number by 1 all the way to, the, you know, the, the, all the way to uh, the, the, the number itself, if we do that and we get two even divisions, that proves that the number is a prime number. Because that num because a prime number is a number that's um, evenly divisible by itself and one. That means that for a prime number, there are, once you once you take that number and you divide by all the numbers, um, and you divide by all the numbers from 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 one and above, you should get only two even divisions. Okay, even if it's a thousand, and you divide thousand by one thousand by it, 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 to prove that a number is a prime number, once you do all those divisions, you should get only two even divisions. So that proves that, right? So that's the idea we're going to do, you know use here. Right, so we, let's go ahead and create a variable, right? That's going to keep track of of the even divisions. Okay, but even before we do that, let us just start the the, the um, condition here. Let's say if um, actually we, what we want to do is basically create a range, right? Because we want to go ahead and divide the number, right? The number by one, by two, by three, all the way to the number itself. So let's go ahead and create a range from one all the way to the number itself, right? Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to use a four. A for loop, okay. And I'm going to say for, uh, what should I call this? Um, I'm going to call this current number. Oh, I'm just going to say for, yeah, I'm going to say current number. Current number is going to be our target variable, and that's that number is going to basically, you know, reference, or it's going to it's going to keep track of, you know, the numbers because we're starting from one all the way to the number itself. So if any time the loop iterates current number, this current number variable is going to refer to, you know, numbers starting from one all the way to the number itself. So let's go ahead and create the range. For, so for current number in range, now let's specify a range. We are starting from one all the way to the number itself, right? But we have to we have to add plus one. Okay. Now if I assuming the number was let's say assuming the user typed in let's say let's say five. Assuming the user's number was let's say five. Now this is not going to go ahead and create. This is not going to create a range from one to five. It's not going to go ahead and create a range from one to five. It's going to go ahead and create a range from one to four. Why? Because the ending limits, the ending number we type here or we we provide here, is not included. It just specifies the end the, in a way where it should, where the range should end, but it's not included in the range. So typing one to five gives you a range from one to four. Typing one to eight gives you a range from one to seven. Okay. Now we want a range from one all the way to the number itself. So if, if the user provided six and we just type in six here, then this is going this is not going to give us a range from one to five uh, one to six. It's going to give us a range from one to five. So if if the user typed in six and we want a range from one to six, we want to we have to add plus one to this, which makes it seven. So one to seven gives you a range from one to six. And and, that, and then the user typed in one to six. And and they, sorry, and, and the user typed in six. Okay, so, so so if the user provided six for the number, we add one to it, get a total of seven, and that's going to give us, this whole thing is going to give us a range from one to six now, okay, because the user provided six over here, that's what I mean. So that's why I did the user's number plus one, okay? All right. All right, so basically, current number is going to basically keep track of the numbers from one to Basically, whatever number the user provided. 
So for assuming the user typed in uh, 4, for example, right? Over here, it's going to be 4 plus 1. That's going to give us 5 here. So it's going to be 1 and 5. That's going to give us a range from 1 to 4. Okay, the user typed in 4. It's going to give us a range from 1 to 4. The first time the loop iterates, current number is going to be 1. And then it's going to go ahead and do what's in the loop. And then it's going to iterate again. And then current number is going to be 2. And it's going to go ahead and do what's in the loop and iterate again. And current number is going to be equal to 3. All the way to 4. Okay, current number is going to start from 1 to 4. And we can actually use this variable in our loop, you know, use it however we want. But this loop is going to iterate from 1, basically iterate, yeah, yeah, from 1 all the way to the, the number that the user typed, okay? Okay, so what what do we want to do? Anytime we, 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 we actually, we, we get to this loop, what we want to do each time we iterate is, we want to, we want to check, and we want, we want to basically keep track of the even divisions. We're going to, I'm going to go ahead and create an if statement and say, if the number itself, right, divided, okay, so over here, I'll, 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 I'll address this division, you know, in a moment, but first let's just stick with it divided by. So if the number here divided by current number, now current number, again, is, is keeping track of the numbers from one to the number itself, right? So it's going to start off by being one, two, three, all, all, all the way to the number itself. So we are taking the number and dividing from the numbers one all the way to the number itself, right? And we want to make sure we get exactly two even divisions. If we get anything more than two even divisions, that number is not prime. If after all the divisions we get two even divisions, that number is prime. Okay, so if the number divided by current number, right? But but remember, like we want to basically check to see if that if the divi this division is um is an even division. Remember when we were doing the division, we started like assuming you typed in five five. We were dividing 5 by 1, 5 by 2, 5 by 3, 5 by 4, and 5 by 5. We're starting from 1 all the way to the number itself. We, okay, dividing 5 by 1 all the way to the number itself. We, the way we check to see if that if, if that if each of the divisions is an even, an even division is when it gives us a remainder of 0. So 5 divided by 1, it gives us 5. But the way we tell if if this division is an even division is when is there is by the remainder five divided by one gives us five remainder zero. If we get a remainder of zero, then that proves that 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 is an even division. That five divided by one is an even division. Five divided by two gave us two point five because we had a remainder of point five and we, and we and we didn't get a remainder of zero. That proves that five divided by two is not an even division because there's a remainder at the end. So that's how we are going to check here. If, if we divide over here. We are going to get the answer answer itself, which is not going to be that helpful. If we divide five by one, we're going to get five. Five doesn't tell us that this division is an is an even division. So I'm going to go ahead and use the, the modulo sign, right? The modulo sign, or yeah, or, or the, mo the, mo the the modulo sign or the modulo sign, however you pronounce it, it still does a division, all right? It still divides number and current number, right? So as you may know, it's typed in five for number. Still going, it's going to divide five, and as in current number is going to start from one, right? So with the first iteration, it's going to be five divided by one. The answer is five, but we are not dividing here. If we're dividing, we would have gotten five for an answer. Because we're using the modulo sign, the modulo sign returns the remainder of the division. So if this number was five and this current number was one, it's still going to divide, but it's not going to, five divided by one, it's not going to give us the five, it's going to give us the remainder of the, the, the division. So we can we can say that if the number modulus modulus the current number is equal to zero, all right. So I'm using double equals over here to comp to compare. I'm not I'm I'm not. If you use one equal sign, you're basically assigning, right? So you don't want to do that. You want to use double equal sign to to ask that is the results of is what's on the right equal to what's on the left? Okay, so it's zero equal to you know the, the this this um. A calculation right so this division is going to return the, the, the remainder and if this division returns a returns a zero basically if, if it's equal to a zero that if it I mean if if the, if the program actually calculates this and then is equal, its answer of it is equal to a zero that proves that that division is um, an even division right so in that case we have to keep track of the even division so let's go ahead and create an even divisions variable outside the you know, in in the function itself, but outside any any of the outside the loop or the and if the and the if statement. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Even divisions. Okay, so a variable that's going to keep track of the even divisions. Let's set it to zero initially because 
before the program starts, it's zero, right? Even divisions is, is, is zero. We haven't found any even divisions until we start keeping track of even division. 